All right, guys, welcome back to Valorant News. Lose going on today in the Valorant world. Shazam is out in Dallas for the big event that was talked about a few weeks ago with the drama with Aimbot and Neon we'll dive into, but also some discussions around Rostermanian decisions for next season. Some tier two discussion, but also from Sentinels indicating they want to potentially bring Marv back into the team. And Ye also discussing whether he could go to Sentinels or some other options out there. If you're on Twitter, your thoughts in the comments. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. First of all, though, we've got to discuss the Champions Bundle. These are some of the Chinese players reacting to the Champions Bundle, which is now here. Here you go. And, um, you know, as always, people are saying, oh, look, that knife, it looks like the Counter-Strike knife and all this. But um, still, this is what it looks like. It's pretty nice, you know, I don't think it's anything spectacular, but, you know, look, it's a selection of skins, and the money from this goes to Riot, 50% of it probably, and then the other 50% from all of the sales trickles down to the teams. Now, the teams are able to keep some percentage, I think, of that. They don't, I think maybe they can keep 50%, and then they have to give the rest of the players. I'm not exactly sure, just because there was some drama with that X10 crit roster a couple of years ago now, where they apparently, like, just took all the skin money and never gave any it to the players. I think there's some rules in place where they have to, but I'm not exactly sure what the official stance on that is. What you will see is that all the players will come out and say, oh wow, this is the best skin ever. You know, like you've got to buy this one right now. And um, the only reason, well, one, they might actually believe it, but one of the reasons why they're saying this is because if you buy this, they get some of the money, right? Imagine they sell $60 million worth of this skin. I don't know if that's ambitious or not. I forget what the numbers usually are, but let's say $60 million sold, 30 million goes to Riot, 30 million goes to the teams, and then like so the of the 30 million for 30 teams, that's I think a million each. I think it trickles down in that way. I'm not sure if it just goes to the teams that actually are at champions, but I think maybe it does. I'm not exactly sure. Maybe there's some sort of spread there. But um and then theoretically in my example, you'd have a million each, and then the organization would take 500 k and then that would be split, you know, between the other players, and then each player gets like hundred k from this, basically, which is pretty good going, to be honest. So that's why the players are going to be like, hey, this is a great skin, got to get this bought right now. Ethan's like, yep, might just be the best skin of the game. So um, he knows that tweeting this is going to make him some money back in a couple of months time, I suppose. And Som also says the same thing. But um, yeah, what it means is champions are just around the corner. Start of 6th of August or whatever, that's when the tournament officially begins. Also wanted to mention what's going on in the Game Changer side because version 1, the favourites for the tournament in the Americas, took down DSG yesterday. DSG looked, um, you know, it was up and down, right? DSG looked like they could be competitive for a time but uh, this was a nice example there of Disguised Toast saying oh uh, well um you know 2v5 we can't possibly lose this and within about three or four seconds it went from a 2v5 into another defeat so um, some questionable plays I've got to say on that side of things but version 1 get the job done 2-0 and they move on Fluorescent was just ridiculous again as she always is on to the grand finals 13-5 13-7 in the end so Disguised with some work to do for sure but V1 the favourites and for good reason. This is the bracket as it stands as well. So version 1, 2 0 Disguise GC. Shopify Rebellion went down to Complexity. So it's Disguise versus Complexity in the Losers Finals today. And then tomorrow is going to be the Grand Finals on July the 30th. And if you guys are local or you know anyone local to Minnesota, then um, they're actually going to be hosting a watch party for this. So version 1 are doing a watch party on July the 30th for the finals in the full tilt time. And so if you guys are local, one who attends, then it would be always a good time to go along to because they've done these for Call of Duty and they always have great at well it always seemed like great experiences so uh, have a look into that one for sure speaking of another organization doing a pretty wild thing so we know that team detonation gaming or whatever right they had a shocking season they lost all their games in the regular season they lost at the last chance qualifier and they're gone so they need a big rebuild and not just are they doing a rebuild from like scratch as in they're getting rid of all their players and they're starting from number one they're literally starting from square one because they're doing an open recruitment process the same thing it seems a little bit as to what evil geniuses did you guys know when eg made their like they basically said anyone can apply and we're gonna go through and choose the best players and i mean look eg are doing kind of well right now so it must have worked out for them in part so team destination are gonna try and do the same thing here and run it back with an open recruitment process if you guys want to try and get onto their roster next season then feel free to apply and um well best of luck basically because i'm sure you can't be any worse than their roster was this past season also though this is hilarious and I'm so happy this is happening. I forgot about this entirely, but um, it's back, baby. So as of today, the Red Bull Ready Check is here. 
brought to you by aim labs and all this so this began right and you guys i'm sure remember this if i remind you on july the 4th with this guy aimbot neon talking about how the gun isn't is too random and all this stuff and jazam is saying like look the game isn't just an aim trainer it's a tactical fps set yourself up to take better fights neon then says i'll see you in dallas buddy i don't know what this means and then neon says i shouldn't really be telling you this because it's more of an aim community thing but since this event is with pros and top us aim as nobody realizes all the pros are going to get embarrassed at this event this isn't meant to be rude or anything that is just what will happen so um, he was getting clowned on this for, at the time and i agreed with the clowning because what really is the point in being able to shoot incredibly well and straight if you actually aren't that good at the game itself but here we are though fast forward to the present day and as rebel gaming say see you in dallas buddy we have shazam and this guy aimbot neon on the right hand side so i think what they are gonna do is so there's some pros here including shazam who looks absolutely delighted with uh you know being in attendance for this one and um the guys like aimbot neon that are gonna sit down and they're gonna do 1v1s on the um on the stage i guess on aim labs or something and then we're gonna see who wins so i'm not exactly sure what the format is gonna be but we'll see like um you know can he live up to his words here and saying that all the pros are gonna get embarrassed by how good these uh aim community guys are we'll see but um yeah looking forward to it and it's finally here and shazam is looking really happy on this one so yeah see you in dallas buddy has that uh, finally come true let's talk though potential roster changes going on for next year because shazam was part of sentinels and we do wonder what sentinels are going to do going forwards there's been lots of talk about especially the brazilian players right sassy pancada rumors that maybe they might team up with aspas and go to fury and stuff like this anyway and sentinels might well have to do a bit of a rebuild now i don't think you get rid of zekin for sure and i don't think you get rid of tens but then again with tens it's an interesting one because his contract will be at an end he might get offers elsewhere he might want to take a break due to the situation with kai day there's also talk about how you make the roles work a bit better on that roster and decisions you might make. I think that Marv should probably not be in game leading, but I would definitely keep him around. And this is probably just the social media manager having a bit of a joke here, but I thought it was interesting they use Marv specifically. So like Sentinels are apparently, this is all probably fake, right? But they're discording um, Marv or Discord messaging Marv. Yo, you won't believe these crazy lineups. This guy found it's insane. Should definitely check it out. And then, you know, links to Marv contract draft document side out his contract so um you know which kind of implies like look they want marv to resign which i think that they should and i think that'd be a good decision i don't think he should go anywhere else and marv probably doesn't want to anyway because i mean even if he goes back to being the sixth man content creator i'm sure he's pretty happy with that but it feels like he's probably got the itch back for competing now and was very good i thought this year all things considered his eye gelling maybe wasn't great at the final event of the last chance qualifier Maybe there's other reasons for that and probably not built exactly for that role, to be honest. So I think there is more to come here and probably Marv will stay on Sentinels and it seems like they want to make that happen. Ye also gave some thoughts on the matter as well, saying that Sentinels is maybe an option. Also talking about NRG and the chef they've got over there, which seems very exciting. And you can never rule that out, right, to return to that former Opticore for Ye over at NRG. But um, the DSG thing is probably not going to be happening. Ye to replace Tans or why are you playing with Zekin? Can I not just play with Zekin and there's no, like, there's nothing behind it, you know? Surely. <laughs> Can you dunk a basketball? Of course. Flashing and just flashing and roll swinging. Yeah. Right. Are I'll you Judge Yeehaw? Yeah, is it true yeah, you're going to be coaching yeah, Sentinels? That, that is like correct. The I'm the future shoot. coach of Wait. Sentinels. Their, their best player bought a scout, now he can't buy a gun. Unless someone drops someone. Cool. We're in good hands. Did GEA part two? Only if, uh, that would depend. You enjoy know, energy for the personal chef's meals? Bro, I've seen, Chet has sent me photos of this chef. This guy is absurd. He's like making Michelin star meals for these guys. Actually absurd.
It was also noted as of yesterday that DDK, who was formerly the general manager over 100 Thieves, and still was as of like a couple of days ago, but um, as has been noticed here by 100T Valley, if we go to DDK's page, you'll find no longer any references to 100 Thieves. You guys remember when it was DDK and Sean Gares came in as the coach general manager, respectively, or Sean Gares was the coach, DDK was the general manager, and um, you know, it, okay, they formed a pretty decent roster, they did quite well but when Sean Gares departed I think maybe it was only a matter of time until DDK was going to be out as well and that is what we seemingly have at the moment with uh, no more DDK on 100 Thieves so big rebuild project possibly going on over there a couple of other bits of juice I thought I wanted to mention because we saw that Valor Intel say as Riot confirmed these are the changes to the prize pool for the upcoming year and Nismo has an interesting take on this saying this is a great way to help the tier 2 scene which basically saying like look use this money for better use right now I don't know if I fully agree with this because if they are putting in more money it shows that they have more money to spend and they're probably more willing to support tier 2 anyway and I think the money for the prize pool this year was going to go up anyway in large part because they put the prize pool up for masters didn't they so I think they would probably do the same here for champions so I'm not sure that it's not like this money if it not wasn't spent here would go on tier 2 anyway so you know look the tier 2 scene needs changes for sure and there needs to be some updates to it and Leo Farrier did actually describe back on July the 9th his thoughts on this and exactly how the tier 2 ecosystem will work and the fact that it's actually all right as it presently is because people have expectations that tier 2 is going to be the same as tier 1. It's about growing and proving your worth. It's supposed to be hard. Most will fail and kind of says that he doesn't really mind and like I don't dictate how orgs run their tier 2 teams it's their business but realistically you either have to have deep pockets to fund a big bold bet or you're scrappy and creative and spend responsibly you can't expect to spend a lot and break even in tier 2 which is probably true but um you know it does raise the question as to why these organizations would even bother now look a lot of these organizations they are like, let's say FaZe and TSM and guys like this that have spent a lot of money to compete in tier 2 hoping to qualify for tier 1 it hasn't really worked for them and a lot of these organizations don't spend responsibly as we full well know but maybe you could say well if the tier 2 ecosystem was made better there were more tournaments the season was longer then there actually would be more reason for these orgs to stay around rather than dipping out for six months and maybe or maybe not returning at the start of next season but that's probably a topic for another day very much interested your thoughts and all this stuff in the comment section below hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new take care and i'll see you next time